Welcome to the show. If you had actual Julie Horn and you could interview her about anything, what would you interview her about? That's the question that I asked myself last night and I thought, I want to ask you about, well, money. It sounds kind of shocking. It sounds shocking when you just say, I'm going to ask you about money. And I think that's because we have this cultural problem where we don't want to talk about money. But you are at the top of your game. There's no one higher than you. And I have already, in other content we've done, asked you about the mindset that took you there. But I want to ask you specifically now about the money mindset. And did you ever, in the early days, were you ever aware of your local competition? Yes. Because it's when you say it's not just the syringe, this makes so much logical sense, but I know people watching this here now emotionally still feel that they might be relatively close to the person down the road who's charging per syringe. So mm. when you were aware of your local competition, did that affect you? Not really. In some way, I always went my own way and focused on my own stuff. Of course, you have to do research. You know, what's going on around you, your, your, your competition. Uh, you need to know what's going on in the same city or street or wherever. It's good to have that information. But that, ne that necessarily didn't affect my decisions. I still have this belief that you should price yourself uh, or your, your treatments for your experience. Uh, I think you're doing a mistake if you price yourself too low. Mm. I think out there it might look like you are cheap for a reason mm. because you don't have the same experience you are cheaper because you need more patients. Mm. Your clinic, it might not, your business is maybe not going as well as mm. you wish. Um, and that is also a reason you have never ever seen me offered any type of discounts mm. or stuff like that. Um, so when it comes to the clinic, don't compare too much. Focus on yourself. Become really good at what you do and then find your value and then you price, you know, you do the pricing. And I think there's a hidden danger of not charging your worth, mm -hmm. which is burnout later down the line. Because motivation, if you are fully booked mm -hmm. and people are loving your work and then you are charging too low and you're six weeks booked out or something, I promise you, you're going to burn out at some point because you're going to think, what am I even doing this all for? You need to keep, it's a bit like in a relationship when you're at the beginning of a relationship and it's all sexy and gorgeous and the honeymoon period, mm. you, but after a while, almost you don't feel like you're getting that freshness back. It's the same with money. You need to stay motivated or else you're going to start resenting your patients because they're getting such a good deal. On that point, do you ever, did you ever have a patient at any time who, who raised an eyebrow or was a bit like, mm, you're expensive? Oh, yeah. Tell uh, me. Well, I've had, but not nowadays. That was a little bit more back in the days when I think more before my international success started, um, more locally up in Scandinavia. Um, I was still charging high. Um, high prices and yes I got comments from patients like well why that's expensive because you know in in my area where I live when they inject they charge half that price oh okay but amazing why don't you book an appointment with that injector then you know that what what's what I would say mm. I mean because they pay for my experience my results not the actual syringe. Mm -hmm. So yes, I had comments, they think it's expensive and not many people know how much effort and work you have put into yourself to become what you are, you know, today or, you know, the skills you have. So the patient might not know your background, that's why you're pricing high. So often I just, 
I tell them, I educate them and I say the reason why my prices are higher than the area you are living in, I mean it can be I have a much higher rent because I'm having the clinic in the city center of Oslo. In her area, it's outside the city, lower rent, lower costs. Uh, but it's also about how much you have invested in your own education and how much time you have invested in getting good at what you're doing. That's what you should charge for. So just have a little conversation with these patients and just let them understand. And they, then they're like, aha, that makes sense. Mm. And then they jump up in the treatment bed. <laughs> this is an interesting debate though, isn't it? Because should we have to justify? We should not have to justify. But if I have a patient that is like really wondering why you feel that they are interested, mm. why are you charging so much? Then I can, you know, educate them because I love educate people. I love being a teacher. But no, you should not have to justify yourself to be, you know, having high prices. No, why should you? And I think if I heard I'm getting these lips, I, I pay for a result, mm. I almost feel more secure, like, yeah. oh, wow, they're results driven. That's and it gives you a bit of, I imagine for you, it's almost, it, you feel like an artist. You, whatever paints you, you need today, you're going to use them. Whereas I think when we get into that scarcity mindset of thinking, oh God, it's, I'm going to charge per syringe, I'm not going to charge very much, you feel scarce and so you don't have much wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Now maybe if we, looked at, if we did a spreadsheet and we looked at your business and you were doing five syringes on each per throwing them away, we might we might need to adjust mm. but I think because you're doing it not for everyone and you have that wiggle room mm. with your with your higher prices love that wiggle room that's exactly yeah so talk to me about I, I want to know and I, I want to hear about life design and how your business fits in with your life goals because I've come to this point in my business where I'm saying things out loud like I would like to work from home X amount of times and I would like to not be working every evening. And because I've done, I've worked every evening for many years, that's a, a desire, life design choice. Mm -hmm. And then money as well. So I would like to have X number of holidays or whatever. Mm. Do you think like that when you're sort of roughly planning your financial and your life design? To be very, very honest with you, I have not thought much about that up until quite recently. I've been just on fire, working, 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 building brand, building, building, growing, growing, because that's where, what I wanted. That's what's my, what my mindset were. I'm going to build this. And I think, you know, when you're growing, you need to sacrifice some things in the begin, at least in the beginning, when you build a foundation, you, you plan and process everything in detail. You need to be, you need to sacrifice things, late evenings, sleepless nights sometimes. Work-life balance during a period might not be that balanced. But you know, now after seven years, I really have started thinking about this. And also a little bit thanks to you for listening to your amazing content and courses, it's like, Finding the right balance between life and work, I think it's important. But to be honest, my work is also a part of my life. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not like business and pleasure. It's, you know, it's um, united. So for me now, um, after this inner circle conference that we're going to have starting tomorrow, super excited by the way, when I, I'm going to take a short vacation and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to plan really hard how to balance my life and work life. Because I believe if you're going to have a long, successful, sustainable career without hitting the wall several times during the process, you know, get these burnouts, you might lose your motivation at some point. It's important. So that's my next mission to sit down and really plan this because yes, you need to rest. 
you need vacations. You need to go offline sometimes and grow as a person. I mean, for me, what I love most, just take Julie Horn, put her somewhere in the middle of the forest, in a rainforest, whatever, a, a rusty cottage, animals around me, dogs, you know, that will be paradise for me. You know, that's life quality for me because I'm working and I'm, I'm, you know, traveling all over the world. My schedule is so, so, so tight to really, for me to really ah, get down and get that healing and get my energy back, put me out in the wild, nature, animals, offline, and just people that you love and trust mm -hmm. around you and yeah South African safaris for example mm -hmm. amazing no so that's my plan to really really start taking more care of myself mm -hmm. not try to you know drive 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 so too hard mm -hmm. for too long mm -hmm. we need breaks and yeah that's my next mission amazing and I think it all ties into I think this is why I brought up this conversation of money because money is freedom. Oh yes. And I think when we when we talk about it like that, it doesn't have to be shameful or no. dirty. But if and what you just described there, that being able to make those choices, that's freedom. Yeah. And actually, I think you probably don't need to sit down with a spreadsheet. You can already take that and just decide that that's that's what you're doing. Um, but I think that. People, I would encourage anyone who's watching this here now who is maybe still in the National Health Service, you know, they're doing, they have a day job where they're doing something clinical mm. and then they have a night job where they're doing aesthetics and then they have dependents maybe and they're helping their parents or whatever it might mm. be. I, I, I encourage all women, men to put your shoulders back and sit down and say, I would like to achieve X by Y date financially. Mm. And then if we can do that, then I, I think we will fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. and we, we can take actions like increasing our prices or charging not per syringe or whatever. But yes. I think there has to be an element of just like, stop, like, mm. you're, like you're saying with rest, mm -hmm. stop, calibrate, mm -hmm. decide and go forward and, and don't be ashamed. Let me just ask you one more question. When I say, the word profit, how do you feel? Good. Do you? <laughs> I have such a checkered past with that word profit. Thank you so much. That was so divine. Thank you for letting me into your money world. You're welcome. It's a private world that you let us in. We are privileged. <laughs> Guys, let me know in the comments what was your biggest takeaway because this was an honor. So I want to know what you learned from it and let me know if there's any other things. When I next grab Julie, what else would you like me to ask her? And don't forget to subscribe as well. Take care. Thank you so much.